Why do you think people accept not being rich? Do you think that it's all coping? Do you think it's all brainwashing? Or genuinely a lot of people are just gonna be okay with that life? Um, I think it's a mix of both. I don't think everyone's gonna be okay with that life because I believe if you had a magical time machine where you could peer into the future, then you were to show a guy who was complacent, chilling, likes to play video games too much, doesn't really have an action plan, is working some job. If you were to show him himself at 50, still flipping those burgers, he'd be like, whoa, that is I have to do something, I have to wake up. So if you're watching this podcast, this is that time machine right now. Stand yourself in front of the mirror if you are that person. Imagine yourself 30 years older. Imagine yourself fat, out of shape, bags under your eyes, wrinkles on your skin, gray hair. Imagine that man exactly where you are today. And if you don't like it, do something to change it because it's complacency that damages people. And that's a mix of brainwashing and programming and uh, you know your personality. It's a mix of lots of things. But I think growing up really impoverished and looking around at the other adults you know who are still in i was well, i was 16 17 years old working at mcdonald's i was working with people who were in their 40s and 50s doing exactly the same job as me and i thought whoa this is fucked i'm gonna have to do something why did that click in your head that clicked in my head really early too and I, that was always my biggest fear was being complacent and not having a life of abundance and not doing what i wanted to do why, why do you think most people don't make that realization I, I don't know why most people don't. It came to me so naturally. Uh, my brother certainly helped. I remember once I was watching a YouTube video. It was a debate, actually. I can't even remember what the debate was about. And I said, uh, I was maybe 19 years old at the time. I was, my brother was 20. We were living in a one bedroom apartment. We could barely pay the rent on. I was watching this debate. I said, whoa, Andrew, this debate is killer. You've got to come watch this debate with me. He looked at me straight in the face and said, Tristan, what the fuck do you care who wins this debate? We are broke turn it off and i was like you know what that's a very good point we're broke what the fuck do i care about these two people debating xyz i don't even remember what they were talking about to this day because i turned it off because he's right we were broke so andrew was a big inspiration to me as well because he was a lot more as as unhappy as i was with our current financial situation he was a lot more unhappy and it may just be that he was a year and a half older than me because i found myself when i reached the the marks in age that he was uh, a year and a half later down the line, I find myself self thinking and, and speaking in exactly the same he, way he was. But he was correct. Why the fuck was I watching that debate? You know, at least watching content like you and content like me is going to wake people up and encourage them to make positive changes in their life. That's the kind of content you should be consuming. But if you're watching a debate on, I don't know, the the war in Ukraine or, you know, the, the, the England leaving the European Union, or even if you're watching, I'll go as far as saying, even if you're watching an American presidential debate, and yeah. these two candidates are arguing and, and you're flipping burgers bro you're gonna be flipping burgers whoever fucking wins turn it off do something else how did you not get upset about hearing that because i've said similar things to my family members like if we get into a pointless argument it's like well you're broke you're not successful yeah. and it hurts their feelings and it, it i mean even i said something hurtful to my to my dad when i had my first six figure i'm going to be completely transparent even though i said i had my first six figure month and i'm like i just made more in a month than you make in a year and when you say stuff like that it hurts a lot of people's feelings rather than inspires them when you heard andrew say you're broke why do you think that you were able to separate your feelings where most people are like don't why would you say that well, I, I've never been an emotionally led person. I've always been a, a factual, a, a objective, um, objectively factual person. So if someone says to me, for example, I got a comment on one of my fucking photos on Instagram recently saying, oh, bro, your hair is receding. And I'm like, I'm 34 years old. Yeah, my hair's, oh, I'm 34. Like what? What am I gonna do? Say, no, it's not? Just shut the fuck up. Like if someone calls me broke or if someone says something about me that's true, fuck am i gonna say argue with them tell them that they're wrong i'm happy to accept the truth of the universe and i think we should all be happy to accept the truth of the universe and if you're not then you have work to do on yourself um perhaps there were stages in my life where i was a little less i was a little more touchy about things like that but i think with uh certainly with age and wisdom because you have to understand i didn't make my first million until i was 28 i didn't have any real money in terms of being able to do what i want and buy a nice car until i was 24 and a half like I was broke a lot longer than I've ever been rich and um, I just knew it I think it comes with age and experience there was certainly more I could have done when I was 18 19 20 21 but I didn't have the the role models that young men have today I didn't have the access to intelligent people that young men have today 
So I think today there's a lot less of an excuse. But if you find yourself, if someone says something about you, um, let's use fitness. I had uh, uh, some surgery on my arm in January. I'm getting back into shape now. I'm looking, I'm looking good these days. Uh, I'm going to have some progress pictures coming soon because I've been... Uh, I'm going to let people into a little secret. Me and my brother have been working on a supplement line, but I myself have been um, ex experimenting with this, trying to get my, my own fitness back into check. Um, when I, After my surgery in January, I'm walking around with no shirt in my house. My brother looked at me and said, bro, you look fucked. You look fat as fuck. And I was out of shape for me. I was still in better shape than the average person. I looked in the mirror. I was like, you know what? Fuck, I do look fat as fuck. I can't wait to get back into shape. What am I going to do? Tell him he's wrong. Mm -hmm. Tell him not to hurt my feelings. You know, let, especially if you have good friends around you, let people encourage you by telling you the truth. Young men will come to me with their business ideas and I'll say, fucking give up. That's the worst business idea I've ever heard. And that's never going to work. Now, if you wish to pursue it after the fact, that's fine because that's your own personal choice. But I'm going to tell you it's shit because I'm not going to lie to you and try to take people's opinion and people you trust and people you respect's opinion into account. That's the best advice I can give. So if you're hanging around with a bunch of fucking losers, that's dangerous. Because if you put on 30 pounds by being a lazy fuck over the you. next six months, your friends aren't going to tell you. You know, you're going to read shit on the internet, cope like girls like dad bods, and you're going to be like, oh, well, girls like dad bods. What the fuck are you talking about? Girls don't like dad bods. You seemed the same amount. Do you, do you consider yourself happier before and after YouTube? Because I think uh, one of the differences between me and you is that most of my satisfaction in life comes from the fact that I can inspire people and I can share my art online and I can, I can inspire people and you, I get the satisfaction that an artist gets from mostly my main channel, not my streaming channel. But you seem the same amount of happy before and after YouTube. Well, I didn't know you beforehand, but what changed? Well. Because I get most of my satisfaction in life does not really come from riches. It comes from who I inspire and in the connection with people what do you what's changed about your attitude on life the fact that so many people look up to you and are inspired by you well i'm this i'm the same amount of content i've always been content although i strive for more i wake up in the morning i'm healthy my fucking arms legs and my dick work i've got my brother next to me you know i'm i'm, I'm living well i'm eating well i'm, I'm sleeping well I, I have been doing for many many years the the contentment hasn't changed uh my level of wealth has increased certainly uh, over the, and it will do every year for the next 20 years till I decide to just you know give up and enjoy myself and I've always been content my I think that it's added a level of happiness because like you said there are things that I didn't experience before that are now a big part of my life um, you know just like I get the hate comments and the hit pieces and the stupid videos the emails I get and the messages I get of people saying that I've inspired them to, to make a positive change you know and you do this you talk about me in this way that nothing makes me happier than that so I feel like I was missing out beforehand because I had a lot to teach the world and perhaps I mean I can call it selfishness almost I was too wrapped up in living my wonderful life uh, everything that's happening now I'm exactly as content as I was before, but believe me, I, I am happier knowing that I have the power to help people.